Hello and a very good morning. You're watching the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Let's begin, as always, with the latest headlines. As mudslinging peaks in the Aam Aadmi Party, leaders deny charges of horse trading, claim that no money was offered. India signs five agreements with Mauritius, extends $500 million credit line to Indian Ocean neighbour. Ahead of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit on Friday, Sri Lanka to release 86 captive Indian fishermen. Government bends to opposition demand in the Rajya Sabha coal mines and minerals amendment bill sent to select parliamentary committee. And Ferguson police chief steps down finally after US Justice Department report indicts the force for widespread racial abuse. Well, the internal turmoil in the Aam Aadmi Party is getting uglier with open mud slinging. A new sting reveals conversations between Arvind Kejriwal and party member Rajesh Garg discussing horse trading. This even as party MLAs sought the complete expulsion of the Bhushans and Yogendra Yadav on grounds of anti-party activities. But they aren't staying quiet. Here's how the drama unfolded. The social work focus seems to have taken backstage. A meeting of Aam Aadmi Party MLAs decided a signature campaign to throw Prashant and Shanti Bhushan and Yogendra Yadav out of the party completely had to be the way forward. A petition to convener Arvind Kejriwal lists the same eight charges that were named by the party against the trio on Tuesday. Yes, there is a petition. I am writing this letter to Arvind Kejriwal. They are writing Shanti Bhushan Ji press conference. Yogendra Yadav Ji is also coming from the other side. वगैरह की तरफ से भी बार बार यही मैसेजिंग आ रही है जीत जीतने से पहले बहुत बुरी लड़ाई लड़नी पड़ी है अंदर से ऐसे लगता था जैसे कि गद्दारी की जा रही है संगठन के साथ और हम लोगों के साथ जितने हमारे विधायक हैं ज्यादा से ज्यादा सबने इस पेटिशन पे साइन किया है और सबने ये अनुरोध किया है की कि पार्टी में पार्टी में अब अनुशासनहीनता किसी भी तरह की बर्दाश्त नहीं की जाएगी और एक सब एक ये मैसेज देना बहुत जरूरी है की पार्टी के खिलाफ कोई खड़ा नहीं हो सकता है Prashant Bhushan has hit back with accusations of his own, the strongest being allegations of horse trading against Kejriwal himself. An audio sting has emerged wherein Kejriwal purportedly tries to buy over some Congress MLAs in his desperation to win the election. The mudslinging is out in the open. No, look, this is all the pain that is happening. And because the arrows were placed on the same way, they were placed on the same way. तो इसलिए हमने जरूरी समझा कि भाई कम से कम इसका एक एक्सप्लेनेशन हमारे कम से कम पार्टी के कार्यकर्ताओं के सामने जाना चाहिए और इसलिए ये हमने खुला पत्र कार्यकर्ताओं के नाम पर लिखा है। The collateral damage became apparent too. Aam Aadmi Party Maharashtra unit leader Anjali Damania quit the party, saying she did not join for this. Damania says she had backed Kejriwal for principles and not horse trading. Either this party works on the Siddhant, the principle for which it is set, or else it doesn't exist. Because the Karyakartas have slogged and slogged for the party. They want politics of principles. We are done with it. We are not here for politics at all. I will never join any political party. I will sit back and in my own life, own sweet home and do whatever I want to do in life. This is not what we have come for. This party is only and only on principles or it doesn't exist. In Arvind Kejriwal's absence, it's left to other party leaders to attempt a patch up of whatever's left. What's the audio tape? Ki kya authenticity hai? सुप्रीम कोर्ट की बाकायदा गाइडलाइन है अमर सिंह के मामले में कोई भी प्राइवेट कन्वर्सेशन जब तक कि ऑथेंटिकेट ना हो उसकी ऑथेंटिसिटी के बारे में कोई जानकारी ना हो उसको चलाना गलत है इलीगल है क्योंकि तो योगेंद्र जी बड़े डेमोक्रेटिक आदमी हैं प्रशांत जी भी बड़े लोकतांत्रिक आदमी हैं पार्टी के ट्रांसपेरेंसी डेमोक्रेसी के बारे में बात करते हैं तो पार्टी का संस्थान पार्टी के अंदर अगर कोई इंस्टीट्यूशन है वो कोई फैसला देता है तो उसका फैसला सबको मानना चाहिए Chief Minister Kejriwal, meanwhile, is in Bangalore undergoing naturopathy treatment. He'll return to Delhi on the 17th. And he'll have plenty of pieces to pick up. Three founder members out of the PAC, demotivated volunteers, and a party divided down the middle. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television.
Well, uh, there you have it, of course. Uh, the uh, crisis within the Aam Aadmi Party seems to be deepening. Uh, the Bhushans as well as uh, Yogendra Yadav have been expelled. And now the latest controversy to hit the Aam Aadmi Party is the sting operation that has come to the fore. A sting operation on uh, Arvind Kejriwal by one of his own party men is the latest blow to the Aam Aadmi Party. Joining me for a chat to talk about this uh, this morning is uh, the political editor of the First Post, Mr. Sanjay Singh. Sanjay, thank you for joining us on the program. Well, barely within a month of winning the Delhi elections with a landslide victory, the Aam Aadmi Party seems to be self-imploding. Did the media expect this? Did you expect this? Nobody expected this, Frank. Uh, this is uh, tomorrow is going to be 30 days, exactly one month since the time Amadhi Party took over and the kind of mandate that they got, 67 out of 70, unimaginable. Also, the mandate. But the way things are happening is really very unfortunate for Amadhi Party and also for whole number of uh, people who have voted for Amadhi Party with lot of expectations, thinking that this party was different. But as things unfold. This gives you a sense that you actually don't get what you thought was. Well, because the way the party is imploding charges and counter charges, this is as any other party, this is not a different party as uh, many people thought it to be. Hmm. You know, that's one aspect of it. Another aspect uh, uh, of it is that a message is being sent out and the general message is that, you know, this party too is an autocratic party. It seems to be Arvind Kejriwal's way or no way. Is that the message that is being sent out? Yeah, precisely. This is uh, 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 completely autocratic and uh, everybody which who left uh, Aam Aadmi Party or came out against Arvind Kejriwal, they had singular charge against uh, Kejriwal and Aam Aadmi Party that this was a very dictatorial party where Arvind Kejriwal was not a convener, he was actually a supremo. A convener is merely the one who convenes the meeting. He is much more than that. And in that sense, this party comes closer to any other regional parties that you have, uh, like um, RJD, like Samajwadi Party, like BSP, like AIDMK, like a whole lot of other parties where there is a supreme, supremo culture. And see, Arvind Kejriwal might be a great vote catcher, but then Yogendra Yadav and Prashant Bhusan have uh, public credibility. And if you talk to people at large, they are not thinking that the Prashant Bhusan or Yogendra Yadav are any villains. And basically they are talking sense. But the issues that they have, that they have raised and yesterday's that sting uh, thing uh, that came out, Rajesh Garg's conversation with Arvind Kejriwal, where he's talking about poaching Congress party MLAs, these are very difficult times for us because these, this explains that A, this party is very dictatorial, B, this party is not different from any other party, C, this party was or is constantly hankering for part, power. And basically, if you see in Aam Aadmi Party, there is a clear divide, those who are directly associated with power in Delhi or in Delhi politics and those who are outside of it. Those who are outside of it, they are asking for reforms and the so-called ideals on which this party was formed. And those who are within, mm -hmm. obviously they have a great deal of interest in, in Kejriwal. And this writing of later 60 MLAs, writing barring uh, the ministers, asking to overthrow uh, Yogen Riyadh and Prashant Bhusan. I don't think this is really going down well in popular minds. You know, has the Aam Aadmi Party let down the people of Delhi who have given them such a huge mandate? And what is the road ahead really as far as the Aam Aadmi Party is concerned? Yeah, this is a, actually a huge letdown because uh, they never thought that uh, Aam Aadmi Party would turn out to be because so many people voted B, for precisely for two reasons. A, they believed in Arvind Kejriwal as a humble uh, politician who was different and who was preaching and uh, practicing a politics which was different. And so was Aam Aadmi Party. And therefore they voted in the numbers that uh, you saw and the results shown. And therefore that kind of trust was there. That trust has got completely misplaced. A large number of people realized that that particular trust to, to which they had voted Aam Aadmi Party, that particular trust was completely misplaced. And B, from here on, for road ahead for Aam Aadmi Party, 
nobody knows but at the moment it's very difficult in their own thinking i think in kejriwal and his team's thinking they think that whatever has to be done these are early days and popular memory is short and therefore you can do whatever you want to do now and whatever bad press that they are getting an internal bickering or imploding or something whatever is happening this will die down in due course and therefore this will be completely a yes man party where aam aadmi party arvind kejriwal would be whatever you call but the fact remains that he would be supremo and then they will start tackling governance issues in delhi in times to come and by the time they go for next elections mm-hmm. or go out of delhi people would actually forget all those things that they would be hoping for Sure. All right. Sanjay Singh will have to leave to that. Thank you so much for joining us there with your inputs early this morning and putting things into perspective for us. Uh, moving on now, former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh was summoned as an accused in the coal scam case by a special CBI court. The five others who have been summoned include former Coal Secretary P C Parak and uh, industrialist Kumar Mangalam Birla. The developments came as the court rejected the CBI's plea to close the case and asked all accused to appear on the 8th of April. Here's more. In a major embarrassment to the UPA2 government, former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh was today summoned as an accused in the coal block allocation case. Former Coal Secretary PC Parak, industrialist Kumar Mangalam Birla, and three others have also been summoned as accused. They have been booked for charges ranging from criminal conspiracy, breach of trust, and under provisions of the Prevention of Corruption Act. The six accused are required to appear before the special CBI court on 8th of April. Supreme Court ने सबसे पहले तो इस केस में जो CBI का investigation हो रहा था उसकी monitoring करी, उसके बाद एक special judge की नियुक्ति करी और special public prosecutor की नियुक्ति करी, जिसके वजह से आज ये हो पाया कि इतने बड़े-बड़े लोगों के खिलाफ भी charchit और समनिंग हो पाई है ये समन्स आना तय था छोटी मोटी संस्था ने समन्स नहीं भेजा है देश की बड़ी संस्था है सुप्रीम कोर्ट का सभी ने सम्मान करना चाहिए इस पर नाराजी और सुप्रीम कोर्ट पे उंगली दिखाने से काम नहीं चलेगा और जांच के लिए सामने जाना चाहिए The case relates to the allocation of Tala Bira 2 block to Hindalco when former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh held the additional charge of the coal ministry. The special court today rejected the CBI's findings in its final report that there was no prosecutable evidence against anyone. Reacting to the development, Manmohan Singh said that while he was upset with the summons, he was open to legal scrutiny. Congress meanwhile rallied behind the former Prime Minister. Well, I respect the judicial process in our country, and I hope in any fair trial, I will be able to establish my total innocence. Dr. Manmohan Singh's integrity and honesty के बारे में पूरी दुनिया जानती है. मुझको कहने की कोई ज़रूरत नहीं है. जहाँ तक court के फैसले की बात है, तो उस पर कोई comments हमें करना भी नहीं चाहिए. It's the Supreme Court. examined coal block allocations from 1993 to 2009 they did not pass even a whisper of a stricture against former prime minister dr manmohan singh or for that matter any other functionary of the former upa government if at all a trial court has come to a certain conclusion it would have to be seen as to what are the facts and circumstances which have warranted that conclusion well now that court has taken cognizance of the case it is inappropriate for me to make any comments because any comments made at this stage may amount to contempt of court it came as a surprise to me but uh, the court has its own method of working Though Manmohan Singh has previously been examined by the investigating agency in connection with the coal block allocation case it will be the first time that he will appear as an accused in the case the supreme court last year scrapped over 200 coal blocks allocated by successive governments over the past two decades the reauctioning of these coal blocks is currently underway bureau report rajya sabha tv Moving on now, the Delhi High Court will hear today a PIL on lifting the ban on the telecast of the BBC documentary India's Daughter. A trial court ordered the ban on the film that shows interview of Mukesh Singh, a 16th December gang rape convict. 
The interview was allegedly conducted inside Tihar jail in 2013. The petition argues that the documentary is just an honest look at the mindset of one of the convicted rapists. It also says the ban infringes on the right of freedom of speech and expression. Moving on now, Nagaland Chief Minister T.R. Ziliang apprised Home Minister Rajnath Singh yesterday about the situation in Dimapur town. Tension prevailed in the town after a mob lynched a rape accused last week. Ziliang later told media that uh, the police booked 45 people. Earlier, the Nagaland government conveyed to the centre that the murdered victim, Syed Sarif Khan, didn't rape the girl but had consensual sex with her. On the 5th of March, a mob dragged out Khan from the jail, pelted him with stones and dragged him dead towards the centre of Dimapur town. The body was strung up from a clock tower. Well, the government has agreed uh, to the opposition's demand to refer the coal mines bill and the mines and minerals bill to separate select committees. Uh, this comes after a day of heated discussion in the upper house whether the respective ordinances should be replaced with the bills without the panel select panel's recommendations. The panels will submit their recommendations by the 18th of March. A day after intense discussion on the floor of the House with both sides citing rules, procedures and past rulings in their favour, the Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Amendment Bill 2015 was finally referred to a select committee which will submit its report by 18th March. I am the Chief Minister of the Raja that Khan and Khanij, Vikas and Vinayam, Adhaniyam, उन्नीस का और संशोधन करने वाले विधेयक जो लोकसभा द्वारा पारित रूप में 18 मार्च 2015 तक या उसके पूर्व प्रतिवेदन प्रस्तुत करने के निर्देश के साथ राज्यसभा की प्रवत समिति को सौंपा जाए According to sources, the decision to send the Mines and Minerals Bill to the Select Committee was taken in the meeting of leaders of various parties with Leader of House and Leader of Opposition in Rajya Sabha and Parliamentary Affairs Minister earlier in the day. The Coal Mines Special Provision Bill 2015, on which the opposition members had moved statutory resolution opposing the ordinance, was also referred to the Select Committee as per the agreement between the leaders. I move the following motion yeah. that the Coal Mine Special Provisions Bill 2015 to provide for allocation of coal and vesting of the right title and interest. The select panels will submit its recommendations within a week. Meanwhile, the Motor Vehicles Amendment Bill 2015 was passed by Rajya Sabha on Wednesday. The government had promulgated an ordinance on Motor Vehicles Bill earlier. Sources say in order to avoid any stalemate on the issue of ordinances, the government has also decided to soften its stand on the Insurance Laws Amendment Bill 2015, which is also slated to come up in the upper house. Vishal Dahiya, Rajya Sabha TV, Delhi. Well, the Motor Vehicles Amendment Bill of 2015, which seeks to pave the way for plying of e-rickshaws on the roads of the National Capital Region, was passed unanimously in the Rajya Sabha. The government has also said that this will give a boost to Make in India initiative as the battery-operated vehicle was now being manufactured indigenously. Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those against, please say no. I think the ICE have it. The ICE have it. The ICE have it. Bill is passed. The Rajya Sabha passed the Motor Vehicles Amendment Bill 2015 by a voice vote on Wednesday. Replying to the debate on bill, Road Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari said the government wanted e-rickshaws to be owned by drivers with licenses to women and physically challenged too. उनके लिए भी हमने ड्राइविंग लाइसेंस देने के बारे में तय किया है और यह तीनों कैटेगरी में 3 और 4% से लोन उपलब्ध है earlier members cutting across party lines supported the bill but also raised some concerns i request that there should be a barest minimum even 1 rupee is sufficient for a registration it should be like that road safety system पे हमको विचार करना चाहिए और कहीं ना कहीं रोड सेफ्टी सिस्टम में एक बदलाव करना चाहिए इसके लिए आपको पैसा देना पड़ेगा राज्यों को आप जो है वो रिक्शा वालों के बारे में चिंता करिए करोड़ों लोगों के मामले में चिंता हो जाएगी और इस देश में स्किल वर्कर कोई है तो वो ड्राइवर ही है 
उसे अच्छे से और उसे सहानुभूति से देखना चाहिए यही मेरी आपके माध्यम से विनती है कटकड़ी एश्योर दिमेंबर्स दैट गवर्नमेंट विल सून ब्रिंग मोर चेंजेस इन द एक्ट टू इम्प्रूव द रोड सेफ्टी सिस्टम इन द कंट्री विशाल दहिया राज्यसभा टीवी दिल्ली Well, let's bring you more updates from across the country in our segment nationwide. The PDP government sent a detailed report to the center on the controversial release of separatist leader Masrat Alam. This was in response to the Home Ministry seeking additional information on the incident under fire after Alam's release. The Jammu and Kashmir government also announced there won't be any further release of militants or political prisoners. Nitish Kumar government comfortably won the confidence vote in Bihar Assembly yesterday backed by the RJD Congress CPI and an independent MLA Nitish Kumar got 140 votes in favor of the confidence motion all rebel G JDU MLAs except uh, former chief minister Jitan Ram Manji voted for Nitish Kumar Manji skipped the voting on health grounds the BJP's 87 members walked out before the voting A powerful blast rocked a market complex in Imphal killing 3 people and injuring 23 others. The explosion left many injured who, who were taken to the Regional Institute of Medical Science Hospital for treatment. No individual or group has claimed responsibility for the blast yet. 55 people died of swine flu since yesterday raising the toll across the country to 1537. Union Health Ministry data showed 27234 people being affected. Manipur also reported its first casualty. The number of people affected by the disease continued to see an upward trend in Delhi as well with 3658 cases. Let's now take a look at the news and events lined up for today in our segment the day ahead. President Pranab Mukherjee will inaugurate a seminar on clean and capable India of Gandhi ji's dreams. The two day event commemorates the 85th anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi's Dandi March. It's organized by the Urban Development Ministry at the Vigyan Bhavan in Delhi. Industrial production data for January is expected to be announced today. The combined consumer price index data for February 2015 will also be declared. Benchmark indices turned weak ahead of the announcement as investors remain cautious. British Foreign Minister Philip Hammond will visit India for 2 days. UK Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs Hammond is expected to hold talks with the External Affairs Minister Shushma Swaraj on bilateral issues. He will also reiterate British Prime Minister David Cameron's invitation to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Hammond will be in Chandigarh to inaugurate a new Deputy High Commission. Well, it's time for a short break now, but coming up, Russian opposition leader Nemtsov's daughter accuses President Putin for his murder. Details on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. A new government in New Delhi. New faces. People are not investing because they are scared of your tax uh, administration. New thinking. The auction process is a fair and good process. You cannot have a one-size-fits-all reform policy. For insights and perspective. Judiciary should be more concerned about corruption within itself. The Modi government slogan of "Achhe Din Aane Wale Hain." Soon, the people's slogan will be "Hamare Purane Din Lauta Do." The biggest show on economic policy. Watch State of the Economy. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, India and Mauritius signed five agreements, including one on ocean economy. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who is on his second leg of his three-nation tour, met Mauritian President Rajkeshwar Puryag yesterday. Both countries agreed to continue negotiations on a revised double tax treaty to prevent its abuse. Here's one. On a two-day bilateral visit to Mauritius, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said both nations had shared interest in the Indian Ocean region. India pledged to concession line of credit of $500 million for civil infrastructure projects in Mauritius. The outcomes and decisions today are truly significant. We discuss our shared interests in a safe 
and secure Indian Ocean and a stable and prosperous Indian Ocean region. We value the leadership by Mauritius in this area. Today, I was pleased to offer a concessional line of credit of 500 million US dollars for civil infrastructure projects for Mauritius. Both countries signed five agreements on traditional medicine and homeopathy, cultural operation and ocean economy. Today, we have offered support for construction of the second cyber city. Our agreement today on the development of Agalega Island is a major stride in our cooperation in infrastructure sector. In his joint statement with Modi, Mauritius Prime Minister Anirudh Jagannath spoke about India's assistance to Mauritius to improve connectivity with its southern islands. India will assist Mauritius in developing itself into a state ocean economy. India will help Mauritius improve the connectivity with its outer islands with focus on the building and upgrading of sea and air transport facilities in Agalega. Modi will attend the island's 47th National Day Ceremony on Thursday. In a tribute to iconic Indian freedom fighter Mahatma Gandhi and the memory of the Indian freedom struggle, Mauritius celebrates its National Day on the day the Dandi March started. Modi will be the guest of honour and the chief guest on the occasion. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be visiting Sri Lanka next as part of his three-nation tour ahead of his arrival on Friday. Sri Lanka announced it will release 86 Indian fishermen arrested for allegedly poaching in its waters. Modi's visit will mark the first by an Indian Prime Minister since Rajiv Gandhi in over 25 years. Former Sri Lankan President Mahinda Rajapakshe had also ordered the release of Indian fishermen in Sri Lankan custody as a goodwill measure to mark the swearing-in of Prime Minister Modi in May last year. Well, after resisting calls to step down under the Ferguson investigation, the police chief Tom Jackson finally resigned yesterday. The decision came following a scathing U.S. Justice Department report that found widespread racial abuses in the city's police department and municipal court. Jackson will receive a severance payment and one year of health insurance. Several other Ferguson officials also stepped down in the wake of the report. U.S. authorities said that they will reform the force, possibly dismantling it. Protesters had called for Jackson's removal since the fatal shooting of an unarmed black teenager by a white Ferguson police officer on the 9th of August. You know, the chief is the kind of honorable man who you don't have to go to. Um, he comes to you when he, when he knows that, um, that this is something that we have to seriously discuss. And so um, after a lot of soul searching and, um, and it is very hard for him to leave and for us to have him leave, uh, he felt that this was the best way forward, doing this obviously not only for the city, but also for the men and women who served under him in the police department. Zana Nemsova, the daughter of Russian opposition leader Boris Nemtsov, has uh, blamed Vladimir Putin for his murder. She said the Russian president must bear political responsibility for it. Former Deputy Prime Minister and veteran liberal politician Boris Nemtsov was shot dead on the 27th of February while he was walking with his girlfriend near the Kremlin. President Putin condemned the murder and pledged to find the killers. Meanwhile, one of the men charged over the murder said that he was forced into confession. Zor Dalayev told prison visitors that he was tied up for two days with a bag on his head and confessed to the killing so that a friend could be freed. Well, that's it on this edition of The Breakfast News. Have a nice day.